606. Zach, do you want to start with your report? Sure. All right. So uh, right off the top, we lost another good full-time yeah. paramedic to a paramedic to a fire department. Um, Do they yeah, pay more. Is that why? Pay more um, and better schedule. wants better schedule, which and wants to be a firefighter. And I can't compete with those three things. So which department? Uh, Agawam. Oh, okay. Agawam or Ludlow. And I'm a little embarrassed. I can't remember which one right now. And those guys would definitely pay more. Yeah. Well. I think I heard Agawam. Agawam, okay, thank you. Um, but uh, we're doing something right because he wants to stay on board as a per diem paramedic, um, and he's excited to do that. And we're thankful to, to keep him in that role. Um, but uh, kind of segueing into what are we doing to both replace him and, and make sure we have fresh EMTs in the future. So, I mean, obviously we're gonna have to do a, a full-time posting just for him, but we also, um, have some new part-time per diem EMT basics that are looking to get started in the career. And both of these people actually came out of a <clears throat> mentoring ride-along program that we do at the department. So for people who are interested in emergency medical services, people who are currently students um, or have no experience or anything like that, we have a ride-along program. And they come along and they shout out um, a mentor and they they get their feet wet, and out of that, the two most recent are both. This is great. We love we love the job, and we love the department. So um, we're looking forward to getting them now that they've passed their test and our EMTs, getting them on board and kind of um, starting that new generation of EMTs. So very exciting for us. Um, let's see. Uh, lots of high-profile calls recently in the news, South County EMS responding to them, um, and it's becoming more and more common for South County EMS to be the first emergency services department on scene. A um, uh, number of reasons, one, you know, the volunteer fire departments just can't compete with a fully staffed agency, so we're out the door faster, we're on scene faster, and then uh, depending on the location of police, and especially Sunderland and Waitley, um, you know, Waitley might not even have a local police officer on duty, we're uh, funding ourselves on scene. So uh, looking at that, it means that our role as emergency service providers are definitely beyond just simply rendering medical aid. It's kind of securing the scene and even you know making sure it's safe traffic-wise and things like that. So our staff is already trained. Um, CEVO, which stands for Coach the Emergency Vehicle Operator, um, are trained on maneuvering apparatus and blocking locations and making sure it's safe for them to operate. Also, is the command system and things like this to establish command and um, request additional resources. So these are all things that we're already tra trained in doing and we're really being exercised in that way and kind of looking forward, always that eye on safety, you know, what additional trainings, you know, might we need to consider just because we are so often those first uh, responders on scene. Um, I think what does mean again? Coaching the emergency vehicle operator. So it's, you know, you, you think you have that romantic image of a police car running around cones on a track at high speed, but a lot of this is also just where do you park um, and things like that um, to make sure everybody is safe. Uh, one of the most deadliest aspects of working emergency service is being hit by traffic. So That scenario you described, does that happen frequently? What? Uh, so your first time team? Yes. Yeah. And, and no, no police officers available. Well, I, I mean, it, it's not. It's not to suggest that the police officers aren't responding quickly. It's just that depending on where the call is, um, we are getting on scene at the same time as police, or a little bit before, a little bit after, typically. And the fire departments were often on scene um, for many minutes before a fire department can respond. Let's see, uh, you know, we talked about uh, revenue and billing and things like that the last meeting of include. Um, the title is Activity Tracking Report by Payer Groups. Um, this report is very crude. Um, so this, is, this doesn't represent all the money that has come in for, these, for this time period or won't come in. Um, but it's, it's a very kind of gross way to look at what's going on. So the first sheet is for our first year of operation. The dates are right underneath the, uh, the headline. So for our first year of operation 2014, um, 
combined collection was 69.03%. Um, and that you can see how that breaks down between the insured and the not insured. And then last year, wait, this is just from 7114 to 73114? That was for a month. Oh. Sorry about that. Well, either way, the reason I was confused is because it looks very similar. But uh, either way, um, if you turn to the next sheet, that's for this past fiscal year. Um, and you'll see that our um, insurance uh, collections um, are much higher. And I will find the, the appropriate first year. Nice catch, thank you, um, the first year. Our, our insurance collections are much higher because we've gone to the um, electronic patient care reporting system. We're more efficient in that and collecting information um, and we get it off to the billing company much faster. Um, and also, uh, we've coordinated with Cooley Dickinson Hospital. They're actually forwarding directly to our billing company now the updated insurance information. So it doesn't have to go through us and then back. So. Cooley Dick is doing it, but not Bay State? Correct, yeah. Um, Cooley Dick is doing it because they've hired a new patient insurance person who is really excited to take these duties on personally. I don't know how sustainable it is. But for the time being, that person is, no, is personally pulling out Excel spreadsheets and sending them to Comstar for us. Um, so that's great. Um, you'll also see... Um, the self-pay, both the insured and the uninsured, um, very low percentage. Um, that's because, you know, if they get a bill and then they can decide not to pay it. Um, what we haven't broached yet is for those people, um, whether we send them to collections or not. Um, and on a case by case or things like that, uh, we do receive reports of the aging monies and things like that. So now that you know we're getting out there now to the point at which um, we'll need to. We'll um, think about I it. think the, what we used to do, Zach, is do it on a case by case basis, and I, I really don't see how that would change because um, each of us know our communities, and um, I feel that if it's someone on 91 it's worth chasing down, but if it's someone in our community and we're familiar with their circumstances, mm -hmm. we can make that judgment. I, you know, I, that's, that's above my pay grade. Um, no, 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 but and I there are certainly, I think, some concerns trying to do a case by case, if not just for the sheer volume of calls that we have now. Um, but because that's what we did in Wakely, and I always struggled with a little bit. I get it, but it's very subjective. If you don't have a formula that you plug in, okay, here's the here's I know, the cutoff. But I, think here's we could, the, but I think we know our communities, and we could sort of set some criteria that we would all agree with, and that we could have, you know, Zach look at it based on that criteria. I, I, mean, so I, I think, think that's a burden. I don't. I don't think that's a burden you need to put on him. Well, I I know, but I hate to write off this, these accounts. Well, but on the other but hand, there's. We have a collection company anyways, don't we? Yeah, we have, we, as part of Comstar, there is a collections portion of it. Um, but as of right now, things you don't, actually, yeah, I was things don't say, automatically. It doesn't go automatically. It's, it's just right now <coughs> sitting as uncollected. So billed, but uncollected. And these are 53 calls from last year that have not been collected, is that right? Um, yeah, or, so that's, or, so of all of our transports, only 53 people did not have insurance. Okay. Um, and of those 53, we've collected 0.45% of the amount that we built. Pretty much. Um, yeah. So, you, like, as a, as a big picture, very small percentage compared to some other demographics. Sure. Um, sure. But, okay. but it still exists. So, so what I find yeah. interesting is, though, that the self, the insured is... Less than, that. less than the uninsured, and I'm not saying well, it could I'm be an there, expert it could be, on. Well, it's, sometimes it's high deductible stuff right. and stuff. Okay, like but they still have insurance, and they especially now. Some of it's bad information too. You be. mean collecting it on the site, like they get well, a bad name or something? Person's got insurance, but nobody follows up with getting the correct uh, 
policy number or whatever. Yeah, whatever no, reason, I, yeah. Somebody doesn't keep <clears throat> following up on it. That should, that's an easy remedy, I would think. That's an administrative. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so Zach, you think you could talk to a few of the uh, surrounding agencies and see how they handle that? Yeah, absolutely. And bring it back to us and see yeah. see what they do. I, I mean, we used to we used to handle things things in our in our town. Bobby would review them, and and he would submit them to the board of selectmen as a number, no name. Mm -hmm. But Bobby would take care of it. I agree with Kip. I don't know if that's necessarily the best way. It's also to put in Zach in that position to say yay or nay. But maybe we can see what some other communities. Yeah, but are Bobby doing. was was in charge of your service before, and and so he was making those kind of. Right, I'd present him with. Right. He he would give a, he would give us he wouldn't give us names. He would say. I know. I know. I he'd know, say ten twenty nine. Right. Right, but that's why, I mean, someone like Zach could. Anyway, whatever. But I I feel like there's no sense in sending yeah. something for collection that we're never going to collect, and it could embarrass someone that you know is not able to do anything. But on the other hand, if if it's a collectible it, item. It's a collectible or it's misinformation on the insurance and the insurance company's getting off the hook, then absolutely, let's let's chase it down. You know, I, I, I and I don't want to, I don't want to be tough on people who have an inability to pay. <clears throat> and, and, and maybe there should be levels of, of dollars that we're talking about, but there are very few other instances in our towns where we say you don't have to pay because you can't afford it when it's a fee for, for a service provided by the town. If you want a building permit, you have to pay the building permit. If you want a dog, you have to get a dog license. And, and so I guess I'm wondering why with medical transportation do we say, oh, wait a second, we can't do that. So I, I, I just, it's the subjectivity that I have a problem with. It's not necessarily the policy, it's the, we don't have a policy, we just sort of have a, a dart throw. And that's what I'm uncomfortable with. Well, I, I mean, I, I think we've always handled it successfully in the past. In our but, but why medical transport as opposed to any other fee? Well, in the, I will use the example. Service. We've had three or four calls to the same household, and they were not able to pay, so we wrote them off. And because they were not, you know, they were living on Social Security, and there was no ability to pay. I mean, and, and there was just a couple instances, Zach, there really wasn't that many over the period of time mm -hmm. that we wrote off, but we wrote off a couple that were, you know, clearly would never, it would be embarrassing to talk about it in an open meeting, and it would be embarrassing to try to do it through the collection agency for them, and there was no ability to pay. Right, okay, but this is 53 people. Right, but I, I, I the thing is, if you go through a collection agency, it's not, you know, we're not going to be discussing that in an open meeting. The collection agency will be handling it. There's a lot of privacy laws and stuff like that. And the collection agency will try to collect numerous times, and if they find the situation's uncollectible, then after a while they drop it, you know. But in the prime example, of, you know, you could have somebody who, you know, chooses a high deductible on their insurance, and then they get a bill, you know, for five hundred dollars for the ambulance. Well, it was their choice to choose a five hundred dollar deductible, and now it's come time for them to pay. And like he says, you know, we're going to send them a real estate tax bill, and if they can't afford that, then you know, we still go after that. And so I think there's enough safeguards in our system if somebody really can't pay it, that they're not. We're not going to collect it. But a collection agency sure seems to me the way to go. Well, to it's just these. that we what we did though is what we ran into where they were charging <coughs> us every time we attempted to collect, and we ended up owing the collecting agency, and that's why we did not. Um, uh, I, I think if it goes above our billing agency, they just go by percentage, okay. whatever they collect, yeah. and we've never done that. And some of them, I don't think you guys have. No. Uh, so you don't, that okay. but, uh, I, I, I just didn't want to end up paying month. for something that, you know, we will never collect realistically. And that was what, one of the reasons we did write off a few, is because we didn't have to pay. But that's a conversation you could have with the collection agency, you know, and that's part of their job. You know, they collect, they get a percentage of it. They don't collect. You know. Let's follow up with that next month and we'll give okay. some more information yeah. and yeah. see which way to get. Um, I guess the only other question I had, Zach, so 608 was our call volume for last year. 
It seemed like it was higher. I thought we were doing higher. We're talking about transports. Oh, oh, okay. So we transport, I think it's 70% of all calls, basically. Okay. So to it's, yeah. Um, I, I was, I, I'm sorry, that's my understanding. I'm, I'm no, that's fine. I, you know, they've got it at 608. If you look at my numbers from last year, we were at um, 594. I tried to figure out where those missing 12 calls were or whatever, and, and they're, I, they're lost somewhere in that other. Just the way that we collected data, um, sometimes sometimes we fudge those, that other column, but. Just, and I, I think I understand, I just want to be clear. Uh, recently there was a call in Deerfield for a truck rollover, and when you got there, the individual refused to be transferred. So that's not considered transport, but it's a call, correct? Correct, yeah, so it counts as a call for service, but it's not, and, and that individual did not receive a bill, right. and will not receive a bill. Those numbers could be different just because of the calendar year compared to the fiscal year, maybe. No, oh, you're absolutely right. Oh, thanks. Yeah, obviously. What, could I ask a question? And, and then this is my learning curve. When when someone refuses transport, and then five hours later, six hours later, they have a major medical issue. Mm -hmm. We're the trained medical team on the scene. Mm -hmm. Are we liable? No. No, you're only allowed to refuse if you're deemed competent to refuse, and we have standards for determining that. Okay. And sometimes it's been so dicey. We've had instances where we'll get the doctor on the phone and be like, you talk to the patient, and it, it comes to the point where it's like, when we come back, it'll be because you're unconscious, and they say, I understand that. So we can't kidnap you. No, I know. It's been <laughs> writing, and I, I just wonder yeah. they, they could always say, I wanted to go, but they didn't want to take. You know, no, some, just, no, and some of the most complex story. documentation. Yeah, we'll a signature. Oh yeah, oh, some of the most complex <laughs> documentation we do are okay. our friends. Okay. That's just my learning curve, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, so I, the last page was just the latest. I just included it because I don't, I'm not sure everybody got the initial email with it. Was just the last sketch of. Um, my work with John Robleski about the Western Mass building. Um, I just talked to him about you know what made sense operationally where the room should be. I would actually move our front door um, to join up with the hallway if possible, not right into the office. But either way, just including it because I think when that went around initially, not everybody got um, the email on that. Uh, let's see. Also, um, so so is Whiteley okay with that setup? I haven't. I, it's it's the exact yeah. same blue, like exact same same, same footprint. You just same shadow. It. Yeah, okay. just the interior rooms are moved around. Yep. Okay. Um, and you're extend and you're extending the garage out though. Recommending to? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I, I thought you were going to have two showers, though. Now we still have the, only one shower. The, there will be an additional shower. That, oh, okay. The um, those bathrooms, locker room thing, that was something John Robleski did himself. That whole area, whatever that square footage is, I I did bathroom slash locker room. So I don't know, you know, how it would. Um, so so we we'd, we'd have. If we had two operators out that had to have a shower at the same time, you know, when you came back, right? We yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and this is, you know, this is me doing the best I can to fit everything in there. And I'm not an architect, so sure, I'm, I'm sure. I just want to make sure that, you know, that, that to me, it's more, it's more of a basic requirement that you have the ability to wash down. Yep. From whatever scene you were coming back, yeah, oh yeah. then absolutely, any yeah. other, other marginal yeah. stuff. And I thought we were all in agreement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just didn't see it here, so I'm sorry. Uh, there was, I, I was in communication with Bob Ahern about this. I the South Deerfield Fire Prudential Committee. I mentioned this in the last Board of Oversight. Had some questions about our operations, Swayze recommended to them that they invite me. He told me he recommended them. I said, like, you should really be directing your questions to the Board of Oversight. Um, if I can make your meeting, you know, I'll be present. Maybe I can answer some just operational, like, kind of fill in the gap stuff. But it sounds like this is a conversation that needs to occur within the context of the Board of Oversight. I wasn't able to make the Board of their Prudential Committee meeting and 
from what I hear chatter in the station from my staff, they were pretty surprised and disappointed that I wasn't there um, and that they, they're confused or don't understand that they should be coming to the Board of Oversight with their questions. Either way, there's something, they've got some questions, I don't know what they are, um, and I don't even know what nature those questions are of. If they have questions, why don't they come to this meeting? Well, th and they, they meet quarterly, and when we meet every month, and, and they know how to get a hold of us. So I don't know, I don't know whether they're just kind of generic questions and they're not that pressing, or whether they're things that they're really concerned about, and there's just a, some, some sort of breakdown in communication. Are they but, for present day operations, do you think? I, I don't know. I know initially it was, they were, they were curious about why the impact ship, that 10 to 6, is at the South Deerfield Fire Station and not at the Sunderland Fire Station. Um, I've heard that, like, telephone, so I wasn't able to address that question directly. But beyond that, I don't know um, what else. I, the, I forget, the language was, you know, discuss any issues that may need to be addressed. I don't know if that's... Could you just address why it's there, just so we know? Right now? Sure. So the, the impact shift person, that shift is designed to actually be on the primary ambulance. So that was a way to engage our per diem and our part-time staff um, and get them involved on the primary ambulance and responding and do the majority of the calls. And as they do that, that frees one of our full-time staff members to do the blood pressure clinics, to do the long-term projects, the administrative duties that they've been assigned. And because our headquarters right now are out of the South Deerfoot Fire Department, um, that full-time person remains there because that's where their office is instead of coming here and moving everything. With, we, and we don't have an office here per our lease agreements, per se, so. But, and, but when the um, first ambulance goes out, then that, then th that full-time person would come, automatically come down to Sunderland to pick up the ambulance. What's been happening is uh, we've been moving the second ambulance and parking it at the South Deerfoot Fire Station, so that way it's available to respond immediately with that second person. So when we had that fatal car accident, we were actually responding with two paramedic ambulances oh, okay. immediately to that accident. So that 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 emergency vehicle stays with that full-time person, um, just so they can respond quickly to anything that might happen. Okay. Exactly, and I, I will offer if they'd like, they can move to Sunderland. We can move the whole thing to Sunderland. We'll make it work if they don't want us there. I, I don't ask the South Deerfield Fire Department how they operate. I don't, why, why is it their concern if we have, I don't, know, Tom. I don't understand <clears throat> why we don't ask their people how they operate. We don't ask them why, they're, why they do what they do. We've got to stop this petty bickering. At some um, point. I am very disappointed about the editorial that was in the recorder. I'm, I'm very sad because we worked so hard to work together. And, and I don't I'll understand. Tell you, you, guys, you guys have worked, I'll tell you what, you guys have worked hard. Um, in, in my opinion, I was disappointed not because it was taking shots at you guys or anything. My opinion, my, my, why I was disappointed is because I think we're doing real, I think Zach and his guys are doing, and the women are doing a really nice job. And we should and we should be highlighting that. Mm -hmm. And this other stuff is a political stuff that that we should need that we we gonna <coughs> take care of. And they need to highlight the good things. And right Tom, now. that's yeah. why we're here. I know. I, I mean, I, I understand. Am, I was physically sick this afternoon, and I was bound and determined to come to this meeting because it was so important. But it's not catching. It. No, no, no. <laughs> I mowed my lawn and I got overheated, so but, I didn't but, go lay down. But again, I, I think that there's a good headache. job. I almost should, probably had to call the right. ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> but we should we should be we should be we should be highlighting the good things and and not what somebody's doing with an ice cube or yeah. or a piece of mud in the I, I, and I understand it's important and I appreciate the fact that we're in their facilities and I understand that they're it's their home and I mean we're visitors in their home I understand that we're we're, we're, we're tenants we're paying a, a good amount of money to I was just going to say wait a second let's clarify this we are tenants and we are paying rent right we're not guests. No, we're we're I, I, I do you think and you? and there was criticism. One of the criticisms of moving to Whaley is that the rent is going to go away. 
the income stream is going to go away. But, but you know, it's interesting. The so, income stream to the fire district. Yeah, the income, income stream, not to the town. The not town. to the town. Not I to know. Town. But I mean, I have gotten complaints that the income stream was going away. And I was like, you can't have it both ways. Oh, well. so, Do you think that uh, they're upset uh, because um, that second ambulance is, is in the in the parking lot and, and we have and maybe they should have adjusted their their rent i i don't know we're not sure yet i have no okay. idea so the, the second ambulance isn't mentioned in the terms of the lease is that accurate right correct so it's sort of ambiguous it, it, it's <laughs> ambiguous it's I, nebulous it's, you know i don't i don't know that our, our employees personal vehicles are either right you would assume that that would be well, what I'd like to offer is I, I, I need to talk to the chief about some other matters, so I, I'm gonna I'll stick my nose in and just see you. what's bugging them, and uh, you know see if I can't iron this out for the time being. Um, I, yeah, I don't know if it's a vehicle. I don't know if it's the amount of staff in the office. I I did I we were at shift change one day and there were five people there. We had a new preceptor and then the two coming out and the two coming in, um, and we heard grumbles about how many of us. Well, it doesn't matter. I, I so, do so I don't, like I don't know what their what their concerns are. Uh, I um, wouldn't think that is because I've been to that station where there's been a hundred people in there, you know, for one of their. <coughs> I don't. Yeah. But well, I, anyways, I'll talk with them. Well, I saw one of the meetings on the uh, cable channel, mm -hmm. and it was referencing that incident, and they, the chief said that. Um, why is this ambulance parked at our station when we're paying rent in Sunderland? And why are we having extra people in our station when we're paying rent in Sunderland? That's that's what sure. was brought up. So I, I think they'll make the offer if they want. We can do the whole thing in Sunderland yeah. if that's what they want. The the South Deerfield Fire District does not pay rent to Sunderland. We pay rent to the South Deerfield Fire District. The towns of Deerfield, Sunderland, and Whitley pay rent to the town of Sunderland, just like we pay rent to the South Deerfield right. Fire District. So, in my opinion, the chief or anyone else has no business if they have if they don't think it's part of the terms of lease, they should come to us and say this is not part of the terms exactly. of lease. That's my right. point. <laughs> they should not be equipping about it. And, and that really, <clears throat> and and when we first said when we first started the thing, what some of our first conversations and and, and like we haven't talked to Trevor, Carolyn, or Kip about it was that we did not want the uh, whoever the director was. Um, to be involved in the political right. bloodletting, right. okay. and, and we and I and we, we wanted questions like that need to be answered by the board of oversight, not by by Zach because Zach has to maintain a working relationship. With him. Okay. And 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 so if they if they have questions like that, they, they can ask the chair and the and the vice or or whomever to go and answer those questions. I think we have to keep Zach out of it just because Zach's. He should be above that right. mm -hmm. Well, it's yeah. not fair. Right. It's, it's not, not fair. fair. Zach, you have a designated you have a designated room over there, correct? Correct. And you don't share that room with any of the fire staff. Correct. Okay. So yeah. I we have the common areas. Matter if you, you know, we have the brain. That office area. If you have ten people or fifty, it shouldn't matter at all. Okay. Well, my guess is they were in the common area in the break room, if it, in addition to that one room. That I, I can't speak to what. That's a guess. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But well, still, I'll talk with them about Come on, people are doing their jobs. I know. Yeah. Okay. Zach, Zach, I, I just asked what when, when you, when you, you had the exact, I would say that you had the exact right response and, and if something like that, can you please notify the chair and, and then the chair could make it, but we, I, I, from the beginning, we didn't want you to get involved with that. Yeah. And, okay. and. That's He's been communicating. It. That's and that's the way to have Bobby, Amy. please don't hesitate to call even mm -hmm. in this kind of thing. I mean, honestly, the three of us are here because we're committed yeah. to making and, this and work. And Bobby, if you have to, you could let Sherry know, and Sherry can notify the town administrators, and they can pass the information. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you guys have no direct authority over the fire district. Correct? No, and I'm not. No, it's not even my district. So right. It's, so it's, it's really so there's very little you guys right. can do. Actually. Is Kip, are you in the district? No. So right. Trevor, it's even, it's even as a, as a yeah. resident of the district. You have no, no, there's no control. Well, no, no, we, we have no control of that part. But as, if you want to say, as the fiscal agent, we definitely have authority over, you know, we have a police agreement with them. And, you know, I'm going to make a point to go in and read that and see exactly what that states and, you know, 
to make sure that we're entitled, you know, we, we're getting our fair share of what mm -hmm. we're paying for. But I, but I also do agree with Tom a lot that we shouldn't, and, and Zach shouldn't be subjected to questions about he chooses to operate. If it's outside the lease agreement, that's fine, we can have that conversation. But in terms of how he chooses to best service the three towns is not their domain. Right. No. It's, it's his not. domain. And, and, it's, and it came from here for a question. Exactly. Right. We're, we're, we're really together. On yeah, that. no, I get that. I, I get that. I just, I want to make sure it's clear now. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it, there's, it's a bit awkward, like I said, because Trevor is the only one that is part of the district. So, I mean, it's, you can go to district meeting and vote. Yes. Any other questions for Zach? Um, I, I have one. Um, Zach, are you are do you have sufficient staff for your your um, per diems and that? Are, are you still have sufficient numbers covering shifts and such? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, between between just getting more efficient, having more per diems come on, and even that impact shift has really lessen that burden of trying to find shift covers and things like that. We're doing quite well for ourselves. Okay, so you are meet, you're meeting the shift requirements yeah, now? Yeah, okay. absolutely. And even with um, Eric Fitzgerald uh, leaving and leaving that hole, just with the impact shift and all the active members we have, it's it's been little to no concern. We've been able to fill those those shifts and not not have to sweat. Them. So do you, want, do you want to review the uh, hiring process now to, to, to fill in for Eric? How, how do you hire your next person? Uh, we'll make a, we'll do a job posting. The last one was long enough ago and we exhausted all the people out of it. Um, so that job posting will be up and then the selection will be made, interviews will be made, they'll be ranked, interviews will be had, they'll be ranked. That uh, person will be brought before the Board of Oversight, um, recommend to the Board of Oversight. The Board of Oversight will then recommend or not recommend to the appointment by the time we get filled. Okay. Hey. And we'll just, you know, all you do, all we do is forward it to the select board agenda. We'll right. The closest select board meeting is, and then we just put it off on, and, and we'll take care of it. And you and we're going to hire a paramedic. Uh, presu presuming we we've, we've done enough upgrades now. Um, our roster is is nicely robust with paramedics, that if the best candidate happens not to be a paramedic, then we have that, um, we have more of an option for that now. Okay. And, and, and again, said, you haven't said that before though. Correct. And, and again, forgive me for not totally understanding. Why would the best option sometimes not be the, who I presume to be the highest qualified in terms of their training? Great question. So the highest qualified, the highest level of training, and paramedic training is expensive and long, um, certainly makes the most sense. We're a paramedic level service, and so we are nothing without a paramedic on that truck. Mm -hmm. We initially hired four paramedics for basics, which meant if we lost one medic, we, don't have, we have a whole shift without coverage. Since then, um, our basics have upgraded, they've gone to paramedic school, they've graduated, and we have more paramedics on our roster, which means that we have the luxury, if we want, to hire a basic who has more total experience in EMS, has better or more is more proficient with the type of demographics or the areas that we cover um, from their own experience, things like that, um, or personally feel to be a better fit for the for the department, um, who is a basic because we, we know that we have enough paramedics on our department and on our roster to maintain our paramedic level. On, on the ambulance. Both of the people in the ambulance don't need to be paramedics. Right. One one and one is sufficient. Right. So it's it's not it's not just about qualifications, it's about fit, it's about a number of parameters. Right. That, I, that qualification means a lot. I mean I, I like that it's heavily weighted. Heavily weighted when making a selection. Um, but has have we ever discussed the concept because becoming a paramedic is so expensive? of at some level subsidizing a current basic employee who would like to better him or herself? 
Uh, we haven't discussed that. Uh, paramedic education costs seven to ten thousand um, dollars, and typically in the <coughs> EMS field, it is understood that the individual will put themselves through that education to get a paramedic job since they are so competitive. We haven't discussed it as far as you know sponsoring or things like that, um, but it's certainly an option, especially. A, we hired EMT basics who are interested in becoming paramedics, and they have since. So, and I'm not um, saying underwrite it completely, but you know, if you can throw them a thousand of a ten thousand dollar bill, right, to show that we really value them as an employee and, their, and improving their skills to serve the, the, the residents, maybe it's something we should discuss if we ever run into the problem we're not having the or the, the pool of applicants. At that as, as long as it's two way, sure. Yeah, right. so you, know, you always got to check that they're not going to hang around. Yeah. Oh, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And maybe you pay them after for certain terms of service or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, don't the police departments do something similar? Mm -hmm. Yeah, at times. They, they send them to school? Or for the full-time academy? Yeah. Yeah, it's a fraction of the length of paramedic school. <clears throat> Understood. Um, yeah, but typically, yeah, if some departments will hire somebody and then what's called sponsor them, send them to the academy. We, uh, we sponsor, and but we've never... Um, I think we've only paid in our history. We've only paid one or two people. Okay. Nor normally we we'll sponsor them, but we don't pay them because you then have to pay their salary while they're in school, and it's very expensive. Um, what we do do is we'll give incentives um, for our EMT basics who were in school. We'll make we'll rejuggle the schedule so that it doesn't interfere with their school work so they have enough time to do their ride time and things like that, which is a way of paying them in a way that we can um, to show that they're valued to us, that, you know, which they wouldn't be able to get at another employer. So um, we do what we can um, I just currently, yeah. Um, and uh, lastly, uh, the uh, truck committee, replacement truck committee has been hard at work, very hard at work. Um, there's four of them on the committee. They just did a factory tour, and they are meeting next week to brainstorm, scheme, and figure out uh, what makes the most sense for a replacement vehicle for South County EMS specifically. Uh, their charge is to come up with recommendation um, for ultimate presentation to the Board of Oversight. Um, so uh, they've been they've been doing a great job with that. I um, said they're touring the fact they toured a factory. Um, are they? Focusing just on one particular brand. Um, the, my under, they've narrowed it down to two last I heard, and it seems that one has stood out so far. That they've been having representatives and dealers come out um, and show the various products. Um, uh, there's a lot going on. And I'm not going to speak for them since I've just let them do their thing. Um, I'm looking forward to their presentation, their recommendation shortly. One of the things that they did do was um, they looked into the, it's the auto load system for the ambulance stretcher. So I, I mentioned earlier, one of the dangerous things for uh, EMS providers is getting hit in traffic. The other one is back injuries and just, we lift patients for a living, we're house movers, except you know, sometimes our refrigerators fight back. Um, so, what we've done over the years is we've all the departments prior to South County EMS upgraded to electric stretchers. So you push a button and it raises them up and lowers them down. Much safer for the providers and much safer for the patients since we're not dropping them and flipping them over. The natural extension of this about five or six years ago was an auto load system where you bring your electric stretcher to the back of the ambulance, it locks in, you push a button, and it loads into the ambulance for you. Um, again, this is a time where patients are dropped. Even just recently, um, I think on the Olympics, one of the gymnasts was dropped being placed into the ambulance because it's that transition, having to lift and latch and all that stuff. They had the company that came out, they provide the systems for Amherst Northampton, very popular, and already provide our systems for our electric stretchers. Uh, the rep came out, demoed it, um, and everybody's in agreement that it makes the most sense safety-wise. Uh, their recommendation is going to be to include this in the new ambulance, and my recommendation is going to be to retrofit the other two ambulances um, so we have the same level of safety across all three and same training across all three ambulances as well. All the operations are the same um, across the board. Uh, 
We've got a ballpark quote on that. I don't have it in front of me right now, but I know that we do have uh, capital money um, that had been previously set aside in previous years that has rolled over for things like this. So my recommendation will be to look into spending that money for, for that. How much are they? Um, you don't know how much. I, it's somewhere to do the two ambulances, the retrofit system, soup to nuts, about fifty thousand dollars. So that includes the system in each ambulance, the installation, and the upgrades to our existing stretchers. There's a couple components that need to be. So it's compatible added. with the existing stretchers. The existing stretch, yeah, absolutely. So we won't need to replace our stretchers. It's the same manufacturer. They just have to add some components to it. So it's not per ambulance. That's that's. All three combined. Fifty thousand for I, be, I believe it's yeah, the yeah. two it's retrofitting the two other ambulances and the fleet, and then including it in a new right. truck as yeah. Then you get to use once you make that investment. Can you reuse it on going forward? Yes. Yeah. So, so you, wouldn't have, you wouldn't have to. So you buy it once and you can use it. Correct. Maybe to at least another, another yep. ambulance. Yeah, it would be like radios or suctions. Any one of those bolt-on items you would then be able to place into a, a future ambulance. So currently you have a, an electric lift stretcher. So when you get to the back of the ambulance, you just roll it into the ambulance and the legs fold up. Is that how it works? The, currently, so the, the stretcher goes up and down on its own. Right. But when we get to the ambulance, we latch it in. And then the provider has to actually lift the ambulance, the stretcher up. So half of it's in the truck. They're lifting the weight of the patient. On the, you, know, you go to lift half of the load. Uh, yeah. The back. It's actually, it's. It's more than half the yeah. load because the wheels are at the far end of the stretcher. So you're, you know, you're doing this. You're not lifting the full load, but you're lifting yeah, a considerable lift amount. Bar hooks into the ambulance, the ambulance. And you're lifting. And then, it, then it's so you like lift. a roller system where it rolls into the truck. So yeah, so now you would lift, and as you're holding it, you push a button and it pulls the wheels up, and then you have to maneuver the stretcher in and latch it. This system, you roll, roll it to the back of the ambulance, and it latches the same, and then it just picks the, the stretcher up. And then you and then it um, slides them into the ambulance. Um, it's also I might add um, they're updating the requirements at the national level for cot retention um, for crash testing, and the current system that are in our ambulances meet the previous um, guidelines, but will not meet the existing ones. They the the ones that we have now they would be grandfathered, but considering the increase in patient safety and this standard for crash testing and patient safety for that, um, it also meets those requirements. So it's a more secure system and keeps the patient safe. So when they're done with their, uh, with all their stuff and they present, do they present to this board or do they present just to you or how do they, how are they, how are they gonna present their findings? Um, my directions was that they need to they need to create a presentation for presentation to this board. And I expected them to be present to be able to answer any questions that anybody might have. Okay. Um, I have full faith in them. Sure. Um, so, I'm you know, I don't. curious to um, see what uh, about. And part of their charge was to pick the chassis that makes the most sense for our department, the upfitter, because there are many different uh, companies that do that and have different offerings, and also any additional um, safety equipment that they think is necessary. So the, kind of those three components to get a whole picture on, okay. on ambulance. Thank you. That's it for me. Jonathan? Got any new news this month for um, building? The, the news that I have is that to do the renovations on the portion of the town office building in Waverly that SCIMS would be housed in, including if we chose to extend the bays out by the 12 feet, um, would be in the 350 to $400,000 range. Um, because you, the, the information that I have received from people who do this on a daily basis is that because of the size of the building in general, even if we're only touching a fraction of the amount of space, you will still need um, an architect's hand. Or an engineer. Or an engineer, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it has, it, it certainly would have kicked in with the 12 foot metal addition, but because of the size of the building, 
And I said, really? And then I said, you know, it wasn't them who made up the rules. It, it's that, 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 that would be needed. I don't know where the information came from that you wouldn't with that size of building. Now, if it turns out that we don't, that's all fine. But I think we should plan if we choose to pursue putting scams in the Waitley Town Office building, um, that we should plan on a, a budget of of between three hundred fifty and four hundred thousand dollars, which I think is a remarkably reasonable price, considering we're dividing it by three towns, and and and, and you know, and our rent is going to decrease dramatically by by housing the ambulances in the three spots, uh, or currently in the three spots, dropping it down to one one stop. Um, we'll avoid the friction that seems to exist right now uh, in the in the fire district building. Um, and it has given us everything we need. So that's that's my update, and that is now. I think that number is probably a a number that could go down and would not go up um, because I think we always want to err on the side of of that as opposed to because again these are it's a it's a it's a conceptual drawing. Um, so that that's the update, but. The town continues to be ready to move as a drop back. Well, I don't think we can consider not consider the addition because it's not usable. I mean, practical for the ambulances not to be able to be worked on, you know, be restocked and cleaned out and stuff like that. I mean, you've got to have room for that. Yeah, I think with the headaches of not having that addition, we'd be fools to not consider if we're already right. working hard to create space that works for us. And, and, and that addition is, you know, not, not a big days. part of the, of the whole not. Yeah. Well, I just. So, I mean, if that were doubling the cost, then we'd say, well, wait a second, but it's it just not doubling the cost. So, so you've got about 350 to 400 plus maybe 32, roughly 32,000 a year plus, um, Heat utilities or something? Not plus. The thirty-two would be including the heat because the rent, and again, it's either we, we either came to a, a rent including all building functions at twenty or twenty-one, and then the, we were guesstimating because we've never had heat and heat and whatever. Sure. We, we don't know what those costs are going to be. That would be, that would bring it up to 20 plus X. And X would be utilities. So, I'm trying to follow this again. So the, we've got like 4,000 square feet roughly, right? If you include all the bays and everything, and yeah. you guys are better at reading plans than I am. And that was, um, and it had about eight bucks a square foot. That's it was less than that. It was, it was less than that. It came down to, and again, if you wanted to do a market rate, it's a lot higher. But I think we, I think we, had, we figured it to be five or six dollars a square foot at okay. the end of the day. But again, we came to the number not based upon. We just square didn't throw a square footage number. We, okay, I was confused. We, we said no, here sorry. is here are the costs that are attributable to the building in its entirety. Yep. Yep. And those costs are divided by the amount of square footage sure. that the ambulance service would be utilizing in the building. So there, there's nothing arbitrary about these numbers. These numbers are based upon what it costs to operate the building. Correct. Yeah. And and what what I would suggest, and I think previously we had pretty uniform agreement on this, if we were to go this route, is that is that we would float a bond for the duration, or, or the, the lease agreement would be written to mirror the duration of the bond, so that Waitley wouldn't be in a position where it had a year and a half, two years, three years, whatever it is left right. on on the bond, and, and then and then no tenant because the tenant right. decided to go somewhere else. So exactly. that's that's the the, the precaution from Waitley's perspective. Sure, that, that's, that's absolutely important. understandable. Yeah. Um, so so we're, 
I'm just trying to Go figure ahead. out total. We had like th 350 to 400 to redo it. And then what do we think in a month for rent? We just, we still not know for sure. Well, we don't we because we, we, we don't know how much it costs. We, just, and we don't it. know what, and part of it is on the ops because you're going to wall off that part. Yep. And then it's what are the costs going to be of that walled off part? I mean, if, if Zach, and I'm, and I'm not picking on Zach, but Zach's the, the, the head. The if he wants to leave the heat on at 80 degrees every night, and, you know, and it's a sauna and, and the doors are open on the garage. You know, that yeah, you yeah. can't control that. Sure, sure. Um, but then again, you guys are also exempt from having to, the burden of, if, if, if the other two thirds of the building do, doesn't manage its utilities appropriately either. Mm -hmm. um, so there's just no way we can, right. we can estimate that. And after the first year, then you'll have a, a better sense of budget. Obviously, but it's still less than rent mm -hmm. total than it is it's, that it's, we're paying now. It's yeah. thirty. It's thirty-one thousand dollars less than rent. Are we paying fifty-one right now total? Something like that. Something Fifty-two. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Fifty-two. That's in all three places. That's in yes. all three places. Yeah. So thirty-six. What is it? Thirty-six, eleven, and it's four or something. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm a little ignorant here. I'm still trying to figure out what the rent. I mean, we I, we don't know what the cost of the. Well, the, the rent would be the the the, the twenty. Again, I don't have it in front. Right. I think it's twenty. It's just twenty. Say twenty something. Um, plus utilities divided by twelve. Utilities, whatever those might plus, be. Plus plus yep. utilities. So whatever twenty divided by twelve is, yep. and then have the utilities on a monthly basis. It's right. Sixteen hundred bucks. Um, and and I also think that and these guys because they've been here the longest and have been dealing with the budget the longest yep. because of the what i would consider pretty fiscally responsible manner in which um the ambulance service has been has been and i want to be careful what i say <laughs> <That's you. laughs> yeah there 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 may be an ability to offset some of the bond costs because of what's in the budget. And again, I don't know what whether that's possible, but it's it's always you know, it's plausible for my naivete. But I think it's possible plausible in the naive. Um, I, I just I continue to think if we if we know we want three ambulances in the same spot and we've talked in the discussion tonight, we 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 know we need consistency on, on location. Yes. It it just makes at the cost of renovating this building, it makes very little sense to, to not go with this option. And I'm not saying that as a select board member from Waverly. I'm saying this as, a, as, a, as a resident yeah. who, unfortunately, town services do cost money. Surely. Yep. Rumor so, has it. So the $20,000 is the rent divided by 12, 1600 and then the four hundred thousand, let's say we did it over sixty months, would be a cost of an additional five hundred fifty dollars a month. Is that the way you're figuring it? Um, I know you well, should rely on my numbers, but whatever the whatever the, the, if the, we, the if, debt service. If it was four hundred thousand, that would include that. Up. And if it was a five year lease, if you divide out, it would come to be five hundred fifty a month. And debt service. Right. You, you gotta include debt service. Okay. Right right now you're you're right now you're borrowing at our last thing was like point two three percent or something. Right. So I'm just saying you, you know, lest anyone think what, what we're trying to hide. It was it was less than one month this year. Yeah. Well, our last our last short term bond yeah. was the band was, it was it was less than one percent. So uh, John one question I had is how how do you so by extending out the uh, the bait we're actually making an improvement to the to the building. Is that taken into is that taken into account? It, I, I guess I'm I'm missing in terms of you mean if it, are 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 you taking into account that we can get more of a return if we were to ever sell the building? Is yeah. that what you're getting at? Yeah, right, right now. I I'm, I'm and, and it, this is just a point of discussion. Yeah. Right now you have a space with no walls, no no bathrooms, no anything inside that area. Yep. Um, we go in there for five years, now you have bathrooms, meeting rooms, uh, office space, um, you have an, a larger, a larger um, garage. garage area. Yeah. You could maybe turn that into your highway garage. How, how is that, how is that, is there, 
is there anything that we get back from expending that money? I, I don't know. I can bring that back. I mean, it certainly hasn't been anything that we've discussed at the board level, and I am certainly not going to speak to my board. No, I understand. Yeah. I, but I was just wondering, so we're making an investment in, in the profit. In the profit. We're making an investment in, in and, I, and I, I, I think there's two answers to this. I, I know people, have, or groups of people have had, there's two answers. I was just wondering what the answer from you, I mean, because we are, we are increasing the value. the value of the right. space. And, and I can go back to the board, and we would probably go into executive session to discuss this okay. as part of negotiations, but I can see it breaking two ways. Yeah, it, a, absolutely. it absolutely it, it increases the, the assessed value, the assessed value, mm -hmm. but does it increase the appraised value? I don't know, because it may turn some buyers off who would have preferred to have space that wasn't, that, that wasn't already broken up. I, I don't know, I don't but know. I'm not a realtor. So, but I can go back and and and, and yeah, that's, bring that up if you, if you guys would like. And, and and Gary, you would be invited to that executive session certainly. I'll give you my input on that. Is that it's been my experience in the in the private sector. You go into a space and you renovate it. If you bear all of that cost, uh, you know you're there for five years. You move out. Well, you can say that you spent four hundred thousand dollars on this parcel or this property. But the next tenant, like he says. It might all be jumped to them, and they're going to want to tear it all out and start from scratch. And so you know what? And your landlord, and your landlord's going to say, "Yeah, thanks for spending that money." Yeah. Yep. See ya. Yep. yep. So right. I, I, and I don't know. Reality. I don't know in terms of, and, and, and of course we're all public entities, so in the private sector it should be different. I don't know who would be able to to um, to gain the the, the depreciation the, 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 the depreciation on well that. the towns wouldn't but you know right, but in the private sector somebody would yeah you, you're right but I know I, I come at this looking at everything from the private sector and that you know in the past I think even local governments kind of in my opinion get this foggy thing because it's a municipality or whatever it still should be run as a business absolutely and absolutely. if you don't do it as a business somebody gets burned along the way. And be, by the way, we are a business. Make no mistake about it, we are a startup business. We may be controlled by three towns or, or and, 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 and one chief, but we're a business. Uh, we've always taken that, we've always oh, taken yeah. that, I'm, we've always it's taken that. It's set up that way. Right. Because it's we've always taken, and, 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 and matter of fact, I'll, I'll go back to our earlier conversations and this thing, one of the reasons that we didn't, we had, Concerns. People had concerns, and, and we didn't answer some shifts because we were we didn't want to get a, get ahead of ourselves by hiring too many paramedics before we knew what was actually. We didn't know how many calls we were going to get, so we actually held back from hiring people because we and 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 we. And this, I think we had the biggest conversations about how and when to hire. I mean, that was for us. It was because we didn't want because that labor is our biggest. Is our busy, busy, right. biggest well, expense. it's and you get stuck because it, you, I mean, if the call volume was <coughs> there and you had to lay someone off, you're still entailing a cost, even though you're not paying. Absolutely. You know so, your pet your payroll, but you're you're going to pay on insurance on employment. Mm -hmm. for, so for us, it's been it, it, that the, the first yeah. seven, eight, nine months were tough because we could have hired more people, and I'm I'm one of them. We would just say, well, let's take a little bit slower. Let's not let's let's not rush into this. We don't know what's going to happen. So. so that's my update. And again, I, I I genuinely believe that we are better off as a service. And again, I know this sounds self-serving. It's not intended to be. Move this up to your film. We'll believe you more. <laughs> <laughs> I can't move to South Deerfield. I can't move to the town of Deerfield. There is no town of South Deerfield. Well, it depends who you ask. Yes. I know, but legally, there's no, you know, so I like to just, you know, have a little fun. Um, I, I just think it's in our best interest to act. We've got to get this behind us. Otherwise, this is going to be our dominant conversation as opposed to what it, we just heard. It's been our dominant. I know. Yeah. And, and, and I think... What's our next step? Our next step, I would suggest, is to, is to enter into true negotiations with the town rather than, you know, the conversation that Kip and I had where, you know, but to enter into true negotiations with the town to figure out, okay, what are the terms going to be and start to sign a contract? That's my, that's, that's my opinion. 
the RFP process, though everything was thrown out, it was very clear that this that this was the only alternative that was a sound alternative that was that was provided, and people had ample opportunity to provide and present their scenario for how this works best. It was not put forth. Now, this board, before the four of us joined it, made the decision to throw everything out, and it was based upon a square footage number because we misunderstood. We, we interpreted incorrectly in terms of what Stanford was looking for. It doesn't change the fact that the Waitley building is still the only viable place where three ambulances can be housed at the same time, <coughs> where all of Zach's office space is, is it can, can be held, where his team has, has training area, they can they can well they can they can they can they can operate without fear of people about without wondering what people are saying about what they're doing there. Um, and, and we can then start to really have conversations about the appropriate staffing levels. <coughs> Maybe when we have our, our, our uniform place and we're, and we're moving forward, we can entertain conversations with other towns who might want to join our, our August organization. I mean, but nobody in their right mind would join us right now if we can't even figure out where we're going to live. And I, and I just think we're doing the three towns a disservice if we continue to ignore the fact that this is the only solution that has been presented that combines three ambulances, that has everything under one roof in a very fiscally responsible manner. Well, what I would like to see is the town of Waitley do their homework and come to this board and say, this is our plan and this is how much it's going to cost. I don't like the open-endedness of about here. But we but we provided. I don't have the I don't have the numbers in front of me right now. But we provided the exact numbers that it would cost to operate South County EMS in that facility. It wasn't an about. It was an exact cost. So what is what is the exact monthly bill, with the exception of except. Um, Sorry. With the utility. Oh, uh, utilities. With the uh, Zach, do you have it in your computer? What we sent you? It was like twenty-two thousand dollars or something. I, I thought it was south of that, but but you know, I literally that thought includes, it was, that includes the renovations and the whole nine yards. No, that oh. that includes that. That's not the renovations because okay. for well, that's what I. That's but, okay, but but South County EMS. But we're going to have to. I believe, and again. You're the designer, not more the, the the contractor, not me. I believe to get more than Jonathan Edwards talking with someone he knows about the cost, there is a there's going to be a cost to getting final bid ready numbers. Because we have to put us out to bid. And, and and that is going to be a cost. And I have always assumed that is a cost that would be borne by the scams. Am I incorrect about that? So we have given every number we can give, and now the next piece would be SCEMS authorizes, the, the, or this, this board authorizes money to be spent to get final numbers that we could go to bid on. Because I can't give you, and, and no, excuse me, nobody could give you those numbers Without those those documents and being and and, and what the bid's going to be, we, we don't. We, there's no way to know. Well, you know what? From my end, you know, I've been working on um, a different op option, and uh, what pushed me to that is that my only issue with the Waitley location is Pine Street, and I've talked with different people at the DPW about getting a traffic light there, and it doesn't seem to be something that could happen too easily, not that it's impossible. And if a tractor trailer truck was coming in and out of there during heavy traffic, the ambulance would be stuck with no way to go. So I've been looking at putting up a facility on, in Deerfield on town-owned property. And um, 
you know, I've gotten 80% of the necessary quotes, not estimates, exact hard numbers from excavation contractors, foundation contractors, concrete floor masons. Uh, I got a completed material list with exact prices with the exception of flooring and inside trim, framing contractors, electrical contractors, plumbing contractors, HVAC contractors, insulation contractors, siding contractors. I still need to get a price from a painting contractor and a flooring contractor. The roofing contractor might be the same as a framer, but it depends on if we decide to go with a shingled roof or metal. I would prefer to do metal. Um, the only thing that that leaves is a specialty contractor for wiring of communications or other specialty needs that SKIMS might need in the facility. Um, you know, and this can be done for under $400,000. Um, and the way I'm envisioning this, and I'm not keeping it from my partners, but I kind of took this on my own, is the town of Deerfield would bear this entire cost and um, you know um, just charge a uh, monthly rent to skims and be put into a s separate fund to do any improvements years down the road and it, it probably would be you know quite a bit south of twenty thousand dollars and that would be all the money that the skims would have to pay there'd be no other and three ambulances would be housed in this building yep. be 30 I think it comes up to 30 Seven thirty-eight hundred square feet with three <coughs> bays. That are each bay is I think twenty by forty, and then it has three offices, two bunk rooms, two bathrooms, and a day room. But by our next meeting, I'll have all the numbers, and uh, I'll present it to them to the board then, and we can go from there. And and, and again, I'm not a contractor, but. It, it strikes me as as, as sounds awful cheap. But unless yeah, for for new construction, right? That's putting it up. Yeah. I mean, where is this? It would be right on Route Five and Ten, adjacent to the South Deerfield Fire Station, but on town land, not the fire district's land. And what's the access? The same access because there's when the people from Channing Beat gave the land to the town. And to the fire district, they um, what's the proper word? they retained a 60-foot easement from the intersection that turns and goes in front of the fire station, goes in front of the town land to each property that they own. I, I, I just I find it incredibly inexpensive mm -hmm. for soup to nuts. Yeah, yep. that would be great. Okay. One year two. Just. Design and prevailing wage rates for a public building. Uh, it doesn't have to be. It, that, this, that's why well, I'm stuck. You do. That's why I'm stuck. Wait, we do, but you, why? Because the town's not paying for this. Who is? I don't know yet. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. I, I, I really appreciate you, you going out on this. And, and again, I don't want to dominate the conversation. No. But. Either, either you don't know yet or you choose not to. Well, I, I, I'd rather not say right now. Because there's, there's if you be don't know, of, that's a problem. No, I do know. Uh, I, I can't, I, I don't want to say now. And it, it does involve multiple businesses uh, that are going to donate some services, some materials, um, and some money. Uh, if I could just throw this up, Kip. We actually tried looking at that before, so it's not a, 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 an unknown concept. We were just never as our group, we were never able to find the partners to make that happen. So if right. Kip can do it, I think he can do what he's talking about. We just could never, we never, we just could never find the partners to put everything together to make that happen. We tried to. And and I guess my question would be, you know, I've lived around here a little bit of time. <clears throat> Why are the partners interested in? spending their dollars i'm not entirely confident it would be something they could write off because we're not a non-profit entity and not every dollar you give to a town is is a deduction jonathan could you build a place and lease it back to the town could you what do you mean you could they could they and i'm not saying i'm not i don't i have i've not talked to kip about this mm -hmm. But one of the things that we were looking for is for a company to build a build a facility and then lease it back to us, and we would pay 
a fee, whatever it was, over 20 years, and, and they would make their money back that way. But if, if a company were to be looking to make a profit after construction costs and taxes that they're going to have to pay, et cetera, if they charge eight dollars a square feet, a uh, square feet, a square foot, they're going to lose money. Well, I understand. I, I, yeah. we, I'm just, I don't know the, the particulars, but if you can find something like that, fine. But if this isn't going, nobody's. The town of Deerfield is going to eventually own the building. It will be when it's completed. It will be gifted to the town. It would be gifted to them. <coughs> if if I were a member of the board of selectmen, mm -hmm. I would be calling the attorney general's office really fast to make sure that that's just not a way to circumvent prevailing wage. Oh well, no, because there's no taxpayers' money being used in it. Well. You are absolutely correct. We would make sure that there was no um, liability, or we would not be liable for any issues. Um, because I know they, people, many people have tried to do this kind of stuff to get, circumvent. Yeah, and to get the I'm, none of us are going to jail. And that's you know. and that's the whole difference is that. But you know. but we don't but but you know you you Kip, you were pretty firm with me. Are those I want exact numbers. I want exact numbers. Yeah. You haven't given me exact numbers on on rent. You have you haven't given me what you asked me for. I will next month. I'll give you the exact. I'll, I'll send to the board the exact cost. With time. With, with, what, excuse me. With timing. Oh yeah. I, I, okay, but I, I will admit that I'm going to get frustrated if this continues to drag out. We all will. And, we all will. And okay. if this is. If this is just a, 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 a another, we got to give it a shot. And 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 by the way, I, I will say that I'm very frustrated that this work wasn't done during a somewhat lengthy RFP process, where this wasn't put together. And let's be clear, everyone has known about the RFP. And to to for and and for and I want this organization have the best possible site for their for the, for the for the service but it seems like it was set up to ignore the RFP process throw bids out and I'm not entirely I'm not comfortable with how one of the bids was was thrown out but I'm biased on that Oh, and now we have breathing room again. It doesn't smell right. Well, I'm not saying that we have breathing room, but before you know, you're the, giving yourself breathing room, Kip. No, before the three of us came onto this board, it was this board who rejected all the RFPs at hand. The the and select board, did you three. Well, but who rejected the bids? Am I wrong? It was a no, recommendation no, we of the oversight board. Yeah, we it was the oversight. That's fair. That's no, fair. Not, so we, we just we just we just accepted their recommendation. And after that point, I started looking into you know what other choices. But why wasn't that done prior to? I was involved. We were here. You, well, know, you were a resident of Deerfield. Come on. You're right. I was a resident of Deerfield. But you want to know something? As a resident of Deerfield, I stood at a top, one of our town meetings and. I was getting blue and red and purple trying to tell our community, do not hire the Mass School Building Authority and spend $3 million on a school roof. And Carolyn will tell you what we went through. I pulled my hair out. I argued. I had to do more research on things that I have forgotten more about. And that saved our community $50,000. And we paid, what, we half a million dollars for all these things. But, you know, uh, now that I'm a select person, for some reason, people tend to want to listen a little bit more. And they're finding out that there's a better financial way of doing things. Than, than this? Than we did? This might be. Well, I guess, I guess that's part of it. You, you said the only concern is Pine Street. And I'm not saying we're going to do this. No, I understand that. I understand that. But, board. but, but it, again, I want this behind us. Mm -hmm. I really want this to be done. And I think what I'm hearing, we are. We are. what I think what I'm hearing is Kip is asking for one month to come yeah. bring the numbers yeah. to us, and at that point we'll <coughs> see we'll see what he has and what and what you guys have. 
if and I wouldn't think we were going to continue that much. Look, the only thing I learned is that the Deerfield board it be, is is because they're they're our fiscal agent. Okay, you have to give them an opportunity, but even and they're they're going to come to the realization, I think, at the next at the next meeting, if it's practical to do or not. Exactly. We, and we we only have one small stumbling block, and that's and we can correct that at our fall town meeting, and it's because of the way the land was accepted. You know, we have to change that to a different use. But there's a real possibility this thing could be completed before March of next year. Oh, oh okay. Uh, you know, I, I, okay. I, I mean, I'm fine giving you the, the month, but I would also request in that same month period of time to um, allay the fears that you have about Pine Street, that perhaps the Deerfield Board of Selectmen uses the bully pulpit that it does have to convince. You can't. I know where you're going with that. Then we'll change the legislation. Uh, you know, but that you can put a light there. He's and you can do it. The you are the appointing authority. Well, who no. appoints? The deed, yeah, but it's not who you appoint to deed it, and it's not part of the charter. It's the charter. That okay, and they could easily go to the legislature and have their covenants it's their changed. Rent. It's your renters that have control over the decision. No, I'm serious. We already, Jonathan. We, we spent money. We spent legal money looking into this. The legislators who it's a it's a deed. It was an act of the legislature. What um, changes acts of legislation? Of, of, of legislation, more legislation. I'm saying if if this were important enough, it is important. Well, enough. clearly That's, it's that not is because a low I don't. I know I don't see pressure being put on the deeded board. I just don't. We I did. never have. We did. Okay. I will guarantee you that I took a lot of heat for this, mm -hmm. and I did investigate, and they did survey their tenants. And their tenants voted or said that they did not want the ambulance going through. Is that on record? You can call who's Dedek's Felicity, whatever. Dedek has their own legal yes. staff, and she's the one and that looked into it for us as well and said no. No, they said that, that, that legally they do not, they have the right to say no. That would have been the easiest. Well, but, 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 yeah, but the, it's not a public road. No, 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 it's a private one. Private or who plows it? Uh, not us. Town of Deerfield doesn't plow, plow that? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think the people from the trucking company do. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it used to be it's not, it's not, we do not maintain that road. So it's not a public way. It goes back a long time ago, but when Rule, when it was Rule, Tool, and the other people, they both hired me and I used to plow that. My guess is, and I'll say this because I know there aren't many fans on the Deedic board, people on the Deedic board that are fans of me, that there are different ways to, pull, and I know, I'm in politics, there are different ways to pull an audience. You can push and you can pull. And if the Deedic board was interested in this, they could have gone to their residence and said this is in the best interest of our town, our residents, and you guys. Or they can say, you know, we're supposed to ask you guys, but we're against it. How do you guys feel? Because you guys are the ultimate authority, but we're against it. And we know the deed board is against it. They're on record being against it. But we can't control that. Yes, you can. You're the appointed authority of the board. So we're going to fire everybody or not appoint them in three years because we don't like a decision they make? That's the way things work, yeah. I don't know. In the board, we had a conversation with the Deedick Board and the Town of Whitley about extending Sandy Lane by 50 feet 12 years ago. I don't think there are too many members of the Deedick Board that are still there from 12 years ago. Maybe one. I know some have passed away, so they're probably not on the board anymore. Repeatedly, new members come on the board. And nothing changes. If you appoint 
people who actually think that regional cooperation is a good idea and that maybe a road can be extended because it makes sense for everybody, then they'll vote that way because that was their opinion originally. It doesn't ever seem to change. So I'm going to make a leap of faith that there's a reason. Okay. Can, Chief, can I, can, can I say that I, I think, you know, we get to give them the week and, I mean, give them the month and we'll, we'll talk about it one month and at that point, we need to, I, I, I think at that, are, are you guys ready to move forward, Chip, if we can't, if we can't put something together? Sure. I know, what you, I, I, you know, from what you're saying, we, we try, we, we, every, I think every member of our board had tried to talk to somebody. Uh, and, and about money was that. spent, money was spent right. for so, legal opinion. So if, I mean, if, so if, if it can happen, bring, bring it to the table. But at, but at some point, the only thing I want to know is at some point, if this can't happen, can we move forward? Yes, yes. Oh, sure. absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, that's why we're here, Tom. I, no, I, I, I just, mean, I just want to, I just to want to commit sure it because, because we, we do need, and, and, and I think you've heard some of the petty stuff that's been oh, going on. Yes. And, and none of you, we, none of us think it's the right way to do business. No. No. So, and we need to move. So, I, I mean, move forward. So, yes. so our, our system can move forward. So. But Jonathan, what I just want, can I just say that I understand where you're coming from, but we did investigate it and we did spend money on it to find um, answers or come to some kind of conclusion. But the conclusion on that is even if we did all these changes, that you want, want, you're still talking like three or four years before this happens. So well, but it's, to me, but it doesn't seem like a viable thing just for that reason, because I feel very strongly that we need to find housing for oh, oh, our I, 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 I agree, but my point is, is that is that if Pine Street is not the panacea, if there was a way to improve our service down the road, we still move into this building, we still have the best service delivery, and we're always looking for a way to improve. That's my only point. I know, I mean, and I understand. The other, the, other, the other request that I have is that Kip is going and getting price quotes on a, what I assume is a design that we have not seen. We have spent how many months nickel and diming a design that our director can live with, that our board can live with, you're going to get price quotes on a design that none of us have ever seen before. Well, Zach's seen it. Well, but Zach doesn't have a vote kit. No, I understand, but I just wanted to make sure that what you know he was looking why for. Haven't, if to. Zach has seen it, why haven't we seen it? Well, it wasn't done when I showed it to him. I'm, I'm sorry. It's it wasn't the, the the design wasn't done wasn't when you done. showed it to him. Right. What did you show him? I showed him a floor a layout similar to what you have, and he did the same thing for me. He did for you. He said, "Well, I'd like to be able to come from here to over to here." I'd but like why to haven't we seen it? It's incomplete yet. So we've been asked to show this time and time again, and it was incomplete time and time again because getting it to a complete design is what discussion is all about. How do you get to a complete design unless you vet it to the members of this board, all of whom have a vote in this? All right. Well, I'll bring it next month. Then. But, but, but that's my frustration. If we don't like the design, if there's something, if there's a flaw with it, you don't have correct quotes. You, yours, is incomplete now, too. What's incomplete about? Where does it show the addition? Where does it show the exact location of things? John's changed it around, but it's still incomplete. And you have but no idea what it's going to cost. Why don't you just wait and I'll bring my proposal? No, you no, know. because big ready documents, you can't do that. How long have you? I understand, but you're working at this from a whole different angle than I am. And you don't what seem to want to understand. What angle is that? Is you're trying to do this through the town or have another municipality, the, well, it's not really, another entity do it for you. I'm doing this all, you know, I'm taking it under my wing but and I'm going to present everything and the whole board can see it. Okay. Know what you're Jonathan, I, if it helps you understand, we haven't seen it either. I understand that, and I don't understand how we can, have, you know, Tom just said it, we we're gonna give him a month, and that's fine. We don't have to give me the month at our next meeting, and that is a month, so. He can circulate some stuff. I mean, Kip, do you have a timeline? But, but the, the best thing I, 
John, the best thing I think it is with, with that month, if it doesn't doesn't if it doesn't come together, we, just, we have a commitment by the three by the three yes. members over here that we're gonna move, that yeah. we'll move forward. I mean this puts okay. it to bed. Okay. This is the yeah. only Jonathan, okay. my my understanding is if this doesn't pan out, there is no other thing. There's nothing. Right. In a month. Yeah. In a month. I, 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 do you feel comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. He has to feel comfortable. Well, Wait a minute. No, I don't have, you know, the thing is, you know, you have no idea what you're doing. As no, and I, I don't take it you, the town, because you just have a floor plan that Zach has given his blessing to, as what I do. You have a ballpark figure of 350 to 400,000. I you. have an exact price. Oh, okay. You know, and, you know, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, there's some things that the town needs to do to, with this property and stuff. And, you know, I'm just doing this as an option. And the entire board can look at the option that I bring forward and look at your option. And what you want the board to do now is to say, okay, let's spend $20,000 and get somebody to come in there, hire an architect, do this out, make up all these documents. Well, that's what towns have to do. That's what towns have. You'd rather spend Waitley's money and this board's money doing it that way. That's your opinion. I choose not to do it that way. Because you're being parochial. <laughs> and then, I, and I believe the Greenfield Recorder would agree with me. Fine. Greenfield distorted. I've waited for 40 years. And I don't think they ever get the story right. You can beat it. Your points are, your points are taken. Or are well taken. I, I, I don't disagree with anything you what you said I, I i don't disagree with it that he's at, he's asking for for a month we tried to do what he's doing if he can if he can pull it off i say hallelujah anything that's going to save us that that if we can have something that we can use that's that's fine that's that's our goal we've always said that you agree with that i agree with that i'm just not sure that, it can be done in a month. well let me ask you this if 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 i did not present this or didn't even come up this what would you like the board to do today work together to fit to, to and I and I believe we need to we do need to spend money to get stamp plans. To plans. Because you need bid. to go out to bid and you can't go out to bid with okay. back in the envelope stuff. So how much money do you want? It's well tip typic if I, I could say typically Unfortunately, because I have to deal with this stuff, a, a number would be ten percent of the cost, mm -hmm. typically. And, and but today it could be twenty percent. It right. could be anywhere between ten. So you're probably looking at forty thousand for design. So this is about. this is at this stage. You could still go out tomorrow and start interviewing architects for this proposal. You don't have to pay them any money. You can make three or four phone calls talk to three or four different engineering or architectural firms, tell them, you know, kind of what you're doing, get a ballpark, you know, start the ball rolling. You could, oh. you could pick That's who what you want to pick. You could decide who you were going to choose. Actually, you could do that. And, and, and use a month because it's going to take some time to decide on your architect. I'm not sure you can't put it up to bid. I don't think you can pre-select your architects. You can interview architects. You can interview, but you have to still put it out to bid. You have to put, qualification. Out, you have to put out an RFP. You absolutely. You do the central registry. You have to do the central registry. You have to have, they give you two envelopes. One, right. one, is, one is a price and one is a, yeah, you know the process. There is a process. It's what's called design and selection. Yep. And that's what have, you have to go through. Yep. And that process does require that you set a committee for review of the designer's qualification. You have to RFP it. Like you said, central register, mm -hmm. takes about a month. Mm -hmm. And then the bid ready plan the specs, once you award it, it will probably take three, three, four months. Yeah, so, so you, can, you can start doing that now. You don't have to wait for me. You can start that process now. He acts, Kip, what Kip says makes sense. You can, you can put together an RFP pretty quick. A designer selection is pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. You can, by the time, by the time you get it done, advertised to the central registry, because it only goes out every sec, every two weeks, and you got to, I think you got to run it at least one. Well, not like, every week, but you have to submit it. Yeah, so, so you can do it. So at the end, 
So at the end of a month, you may just be starting to get RFP responses. Because you could do that, and if you want to do that, absolutely. So you don't have to be with you can start your own ball roll. Okay. And you know, and we could do that, John. Okay. Because if this doesn't pay, if we got to we got to go forward anyways, right? Yeah. yeah, and and if Kip can't come together for next month, I mean by then, we know it's off the table. Okay. Any other business before the board tonight? Good day. It's a short one, Bob. Going once. It looks like somebody has a question. Well, uh, I'm just wondering about the rest of the agenda. Are you going to sex? Yeah. I haven't talked to him yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just don't leave you out. Yeah, we got to do something with sex review pretty quick and get that back to the Deerfield Select Board. Okay. Okay. All right. Make it number one. Time. Have you talked to him yet, Chief? No. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> I got a, a ten-year-old to take wait, wait, How long you been in Fort You got that second on that quick, Trevor? I got a ten-year-old, four ten-year-olds at my house. I got to take camera tonight, oh, oh, oh. so I got to get going. Good, luck. Good to see you all. Thank you, Bye, Trevor. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Trevor. Thank you. Thanks, John. Well, thank you.